best moments were when we do something we are not supposed to do. Patience. Though patience is painful, but that kind of pain is positive. I don't call my client clients. I call them friends. I used to find joy and excitement in anything that could provoke my imagination. Unwavering belief that every act of honest work and good service resonate in the world, even if unseen. And Islam says, "In Allah la yudhiyu ajra min ahsan amala." means God will not waste the good deed of the people that did good work. In UAE, especially in Dubai, the speed of how things move and the unpredictable rapid changes in the market is one of the main challenges. What remains to be the crown jewel of Nakheel is the Palm Jumeirah Island. Success, in, in my point of view, is reaching a level where you are happy with what you've achieved in life. I am your host Gaurav Garg and we welcome all our viewers to our show Amazing Mentor. Today with us is Humayd Al Noami. He is director at Nakhil Group and he is also volunteers in World Hunger Organization and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Center for Cultural Understanding. Nakhil is a world leading master developer whose innovative landmark projects form an iconic portfolio of master community and residential, retail, hospitality, and leather development that are pivotal in releasing Dubai's vision. It's a pleasure to welcome Humayd Al Noami to our show Amazing Mentor. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. I'm uh, I'm very humbled to be in, in your show and uh, and there are a lot of stories that I'd love to share and plenty of hopefully insightful uh, advices and experiences that I can share with the community. So we'll right away take you towards your childhood. So tell us how was you as a student in your childhood? As a student, I attended a private school uh, called Dubai International School. Dubai International School has been there since I was in kindergarten. A beautiful private school. I started as a very average student, and then I started becoming friends with reading and books, which was a great fit for me because I have been a very shy student even in my teenage years. I never understood how. to be like my peers in terms of their interest like their passion in life which was primarily cars addiction to video games smoking and obviously girls so i've uh, i've dedicated my childhood and teenage life into uh, learning more and becoming what i dream of i couldn't find a uh, proper sense on why should we waste time and energy on engaging in activities that are not beneficial for us or anything that will not reflect as progress uh, to success so how was your childhood and what has been your happiest memory from your childhood My childhood was very interesting as I used to find joy and excitement in anything that could provoke my imagination. I was born on 23rd October 1987 and as I grew to be uh, conscious and able to remember the past, I could recall that our fun was primarily most uh, outdoors in winter and summer and our summer at that time was very hot. I was obsessed with the uh, building and digging. In summer we used to I used to go with my brother behind the house and dig and start building makeshift stuff and I created trenches similar to the ones that are used by the military and during that period I picked up pieces of wood metal to construct an underground base I was known to enjoy playing with fire spend countless hours continuously collecting wood and anything that is flammable and create a pit and see how long with the fire with you know, with the flames last i also enjoyed lego board games then computer then video games so apart from your memories around your house what are your memories from your school college or graduation time and i was in the same school from kindergarten and until high school so i'm going to sum it up and uh, mention it in uh, sequence most of my best moments were when we do something we are not supposed to do <laughs> uh, and being a shy quiet student i was never suspected of these pranks and the pranks that i orchestrated mostly alone i do these pranks like shutting down the <laughs> the electricity of the school it was a big school 
taking a huge balloons filled with helium and tying them to random lunch bags and seeing them go to space. <laughs> and all the way to college, I still couldn't make sense of what my peers were interested in because then my, my interest was study, work, work hard, progress, progress and uh, successes, fulfillment. And especially during the college period, we, we got our driving license. All of my friends were obsessed with driving and uh, obviously obsessed with uh, tuning up uh, and upgrading their vehicles to the extent that some of their uh, cars had turbo, nitro, large tires, horsepower so high that it defies logic. Um, I also thought that with the amount of skills my friends have to put so much horsepower into like a SUV and the efficiency of the power cons uh, consumed and produced is um, completely, it defies logic. So I, I've, uh, I've been always teasing my, my friends uh, that uh, if that power was utilized to um, create a spaceship that would take you to space. It will have enough power to penetrate the atmospheric barrier. But the best moment I would say was when I chose to complete my last year in college, which is the graduation year, and I chose to specialize in travel and tourism which was a, a major that just opened. It opened once and we finished it, graduated and it closed. The major reason why I chose this field is a bit odd. Before joining travel and tourism, I was an extremely quiet, shy person with persistent social anxiety. And this field, the total opposite of my personality. I studied in my college. I studied uh, when I started in uh, Dubai Men's College, but my major was transferred to Dubai Women's College. So I imagine having social anxiety and being shy and then communicating with, communicating, interacting and working with girls and being surrounded by girls, doing, practicing public speaking, talking non-stop to tourists, uh, tour guiding a crowd of different nationalities, ethnic ethnicities and uh, personality. I then graduated with a fairly good mark, but my main goal out of going into this field was to conquer my social anxiety and shyness, to, to be put in a situation where I have no choice but to deal with it, which helped me a lot and changed uh, me to become who I am today. So any of your friend you are still in touch with? I kept one friend. The remaining, they became very different. Some of them, they became exposed to an amount of wealth. Many of us got married and our priorities became different. Life became busier and having children and a house to look after by yourself. And all of the serious responsibilities has changed so many people. But for me, I've changed to the better, but I still remain to be the person who I am or I wish to be. So as a child, what was your dream profession? The first dream profession was to be an astronaut. Then it changed to being a police officer and then changed to being a soldier. Then anything related to justice. But I feel like even though my field of work is not directly connected, but uh, I have a sense of responsibility to be extremely fair, honest and just. So what about your hobbies and interests? I find peace in reading books, especially books on philosophy ranging from Frederick Nietzsche to Carl Gustav Jung to the several books I have. Also other hobbies, which is I used to, I wish I had the time, but I used to swim for hours in the sea, hours upon hours. My number one favorite hobby uh, is free diving. It remains to be my favorite. I have a license for scuba diving. But with that hobby, my one friend decided to create a group of free divers that conducts booking for trips, but it's exhibitions. Like we don't call them trips, we call them exploration or expeditions 
and mostly anyone can book. We're a known group. We have a website it's called naw.ae. And finally, one of my <laughs> hidden talent is I love to draw. I use a 0.5 mechanical pencil and I start drawing highly detailed drawings. So that sums up my hobbies. <laughs> So who has been the biggest influence on your life and what lesson did that person taught you? Two people. Number one is my father. I call him the silent leader as he speaks less and his words, though very minimal, has deeper meaning. He taught me about the poetic beauty of patience. Though patience is painful, but that kind of pain is positive. And he taught me about how to become persevere and to work hard and uh, focus. Another big influence is one of my previous line managers and mentor, who unlike anyone I have encountered throughout my almost 15 years in office, has focused on me, encouraging me and motivating me, utilizing my skills and abilities. And from that moment, I have prospered in my field of work and became, alhamdulillah, became popular, influential, and admired person uh, in the market amongst the community. I've gained a, a huge um, amount of friends. I don't call my client clients, I call them friends. So I've, I've made thousands of uh, friends locally and internationally. And I would like to give a shout out to the Cool Guys Club, which is <laughs> which is a club I've uh, made uh, that, that has uh, the market leaders uniting once a month to talk and uh, share experiences. So tell me any moment from your life when a person's kindness made a difference in your life. For me, sometimes all that a person needs is an encouraging words. And the lack of encouraging words and any type of faith and the motivation that, that is heard. Like uh, when a person is quenching and is thirsty for a word, like a, a word of encouragement. In my point of view, that is for many people like me, it's all what we need. And it brings a world of difference. Just so recently, I decided to revise my close friend circle and I completely changed all of my previous circle of friends to new diverse friends and each unconditionally told me the best things that my soul was yearning to hear and my life continued to change to the better. And this is, this is just 2013 and I can see the difference, the way I look at life and the amount of appreciation that I never expected from people that I've known just recently. I would say what impacted me the most in terms of encouragement is what the community, what my new friends and the, the new people say and uh, made a world of difference. So do you believe in love at first sight? I'm torn about the concept of love at first sight while I'm intrigued by the romantic notion of instantly connecting with someone in a profound way. I also appreciate that true love often evolves over time through shared experience and deep understanding. So in essence, I'm both a believer and a skeptic. So what about your spouse or partner? How do you meet? It was a meaningful coincidental situation that came, I believe, from uh, divine origin. So my wife, I heard about her. I studied her personality traits. Like I wasn't stalking or doing anything, but I took my time to study her personality and her level of intellect, and uh, which for me, that is beauty. And, and I relied on uh, my imagination. Then I wasn't hesitant. I felt that I'm doing the right thing. Even my parents, uh, they were surprised to see sudden courage to pursue uh, marriage. Then I was, I did it the, tradi the traditional and religious way. And my imagination did not fail me. And it was better than, I, than what I w wished for. So any of your favorite stories from your marriage life? One of my favorite stories from my marriage involves moments that are that's, uh, more humorous than traditionally romantic. My partner and I decided to surprise each other with the anniversary gifts, uh, but in a comical twist. Like something you would not expect at all. We both ended up buying each other the most completely ra random expensive in value and in meaning. For example, cooking lessons. <laughs> or 
pottery or anything that is out of the ordinary. It turned out we'd both been subtly complaining about others cooking for months without realizing it. It just underscored how in sync we are. Like uh, cooking aside, it, with all of the activity that we that we did, it uh, made us really appreciate and understand that uh, there is a um, synergy. We've done so many different activities that not every couple does. Like we used to do un unusual things, spontaneous. And it, it made us aware of the synergy between us and the differences and the connection. And that that's the beauty of our relationship. It's filled with laughter and love in equal measure. So where did you start your professional journey? My professional journey, I started in Nakhil, which was my first job. Immediately after graduating from uh, college, I joined uh, Nakhil in August 2008 as a leasing executive. So by August 2023, I'll complete 15 years. So post joining, what was your first task assigned to you? My first task was, it was in retail leasing. In the first six months, I have modestly increased the revenue stream by simple methods. Since I was very new to the field, in the first six months, I started with um, a task that is as easy as uh, adding more ATM machines. And in total, it, it generated a revenue that, that was very good in comparison with the people that have joined at that time. Because all of us, we were part of a development program. So I, I succeeded in making actual progress than just showing the management a presentation. So what about the initial days challenges? What all challenges did you face initially? The first challenge, which was when I started back in August 2008, was uh, the distance between home and the office. Our mall division uh, office was in Ibn Battuta Mall. And in 2008, Ibn Battuta Mall was in a faraway land in a semi-developed area that being constructed, which is just the feeling of uh, being far from home was unusual. And of course, getting used to the corporate environment and the diversified mix of nationalities, which was more intriguing than challenging. So post completing your business management and travel and tourism, what made you choose real estate as your career line? I haven't really chosen real estate. I was more focused on retail leasing and shopping malls, like developing, creating shopping malls. But then eventually I came to understand that a retail development in a real estate project or master development is a key factor in determining the value of property. So 30 years ago, the component of having a, a mall in a a community or a neighborhood was never considered. But now for every developer, retail development is a major factor in increasing the capital value of a property. From that on, I've started working on existing shopping malls to developing, building and constructing a shopping mall from ground to completion. Even looking at the, the details of how is it constructed and all of that. So what are the best practices you would suggest to boost potential of any organization? In my point of view, there are so many methods to boost an organization's potential. And in my experience is to empower and train employees, create a work culture that uh, induces uh, and encourages collaboration and open communication, adopting innovative ideas that provoke the normal way of thinking, thus enabling the employee to think bigger and beyond the conventional boundaries. So what relation do you see between startups and technology? I am a big fan of startups and crowdfunding and uh, the proper use of AI technology. Startup and technology share an intrinsic relationship. Technology today serves as a propeller for startups to transform traditional industries, creating innovations and creating fluidity and streamlining uh, of operational efficiencies. In many cases, it's the technological edge that defines a startup unique value proposition in a uh, competitive market. I have been for the past year or so focusing on models that shall be adopted in the coming months 
the younger entrepreneurs and startups are on the rise, but the success rate is low. I have engaged in continuous research and discussions with uh, major startup incubators. Many of these have provided insight and methods and platforms, even algorithms and success matrix that will ensure much higher level of success. This includes a worldwide uh, community of investors and venture capitalists. It's mind blowing, but like I'm observing it day by day, observing the progress and it shall be introduced properly to the market in the UAE and the region. So what is achievement for you? I work on tasks and projects with complete selflessness, not concerned with rewards or recognition. My my true gratification lies in the completion of a project. My first aim is to make sure that I avoid all of the obstacles and it's not a project if it's not going to happen. The source of it is purely in service to my God and my country. I am guided by an unwavering belief that every act of honest work and good service resonate in the world, even if unseen. And therefore, good work and good service never goes to waste. We have it also in, in Islam says, Inna Allah la ajra man ahsan amala, which means God will not waste the good deed of the people that did good work. So what all type of project does Nakhil do? Nakhil is the leading real estate developer in Dubai. I would say with the largest land mass in the region and uh, the biggest waterfront land in the region and maybe the world. Nakhil is known for a diverse range of projects and the one-of-a-kind iconic project like uh, constructing the first man-made islands which added to the coastal line of uh, Dubai over 300 kilometers of waterfront, which is more than double. That comes as part on the importance of having a bigger coastal, like larger, um, lengthy beach. And we've built Palm Jumeirah, which is extremely successful. The World Island, which is now slowly becoming more defined with new projects. Deira Island, we have so many new hotels and projects and markets that are open there. And just two or three days ago, we've announced Tom uh, Jabal Ali, which is an already built island, but with an investment of 4.7 billion dirham, we're going to start constructing it. So the island is already there and uh, we're going to construct it. Development includes large developments, residential, retail, hospitality, iconic leisure attractions. So as a director, Nakhil Group, what are your roles and responsibilities? I worked on uh, various projects, mainly and mostly all the retail developments and shopping malls uh, within uh, Nakhil portfolio. As of 2013, within a few months, I will mark my 15th anniversary in Nakhil. I am now focusing, I've moved to business development, but my objectives and goals still remain to support, elevate and research for tools and methods to attract more retail brands internationally and locally and to assist the leasing department by technological solution, my wide market connections and innovations, retail, new brands, new trends and enhanced flow of work. So according to you, what is the future of AI in coming 10 to 20 years? In the next 10 to 20 years, the spread of AI is expected to revolutionize various sectors, enhancing productivity, enabling personalized experience, driving automation, and potentially creating new industries, while also raising significant ethical privacy and job displacement consideration. For me, it's like the invention of a calculator. It made calculating things easier so that don't necessarily need to know it by heart. But with AI, it serves to give uh, humanity an opportunity to advance in different careers. I find it interesting as like week by week, you've got uh, so many services that will erase uh, certain markets like the uh, freelance writers or coders, even uh, employees that code. It's something we we couldn't imagine, but I think the impact is going to be positive. So as far as real sector is concerned, what are day-to-day challenges in any real estate company in UAE? 
In UAE, especially in Dubai, the speed of how things move and the unpredictable rapid changes in the market is one of the main challenges. As an expert or like person in the field of real estate or retail, you have to develop fluidity in accepting the new norms. And the new norms change weekly. Before, like fractional investment into real estate was uh, shunned upon. It was uh, considered uh, blasphemy. But uh, soon we're going to hear about companies opening in uh, Dubai with regulations and everything that is needed to allow people to, instead of investing a huge amount, they can invest in a fraction. And uh, there are so many new models that are coming. It's very interesting. It sounds futuristic and hippie, like fairy tale. But as soon as the majority of people believe in it, it's inevitable that it will become reality. So you have 15 plus years of experience in real estate. According to you, what is an ideal project? Each project that I've worked on is very unique in its own way. That's what makes Nakhil very special. Like I've worked on Ibn Battuta Mall, literally releasing the whole mall all over again. There were projects that were retail development, street tile development, open air. And most importantly is uh, one of our projects that is different in every way from any other project, which is Dragon Mart. It has its own regulations, its own authority. It's a free zone. It's almost in order for you to open a shop in Dragon Mart, you have to be Chinese. It's a market that generates a lot of business that is mind blowing. All of them, each and every project has been uh, successfully profitable. We never had a project that did not make twice or thrice its investment amount. But what remains to be the crown jewel of uh, Nakhil is the Palm Jumeirah Island. So if a brokerage firm in UAE you want to register with Nakhil as a brokerage firm, what would be the procedure and how to contact Nakhil Group? I think in the past there was a certain procedure. Maybe it's still there. However, I haven't been able to check ever since the top management changed and uh, Nakhil transformed to Nakhil version 3.0. So I believe that it's still there. However, it's worth I'll investigate that and uh, more than happy to help brokerage companies register with us. So how has been your journey from licensing executive to director? It was a long journey. It started in 2008 as a leasing executive. The financial crisis started and it started affecting us, I think, by 2019. And it was not the best scene ever. For the first time in my life, I've encountered and felt an anxiety attack. Why? Because the amount of people that were let go all of a sudden is huge. The quantities were, were high. And everyone, including my line manager, her line manager, the whole team suddenly in one day had to leave, which had also a positive impact on me, which is uh, I really had no choice but to carry all of their work and make it work. And then based on that, I've been working solo. We were a department of, I think, 50 people. We were reduced to 10 or maybe five. After a few months, we then discovered ways to minimize the processes and maximize on the results. And then from that period on, I started getting promoted because I've, I've exceeded the expectation. And uh, I've, I've even participated and helped in many tasks that does not uh, involve my line of work. In the same pace, I worked harder and, and harder until director and hopefully to infinity. So apart from challenges, what's that one thing you love about your journey the most? Getting to know people and creating connections and learning. In my department, a day is not systematic or uh, routine it's totally different. Like you get to meet people with different personalities. You then learn ways how to deal with different nationalities. And for example, changing your dialect to fit certain Arabic nationalities and even to the level of the way to behave or to treat a Russian versus the way to treat a Chinese person. So what inspired you to become a volunteer in World? 
I don't want to say that I'm a philanthropist because it's uh, so fashionable these days. I felt that this is a lesson that we learned from uh, Sheikh Zayed. Zayed means increase, like it means more. So that lesson was God gave you wealth or money or an amount that you can give to people and give them as much as you can and never expect anything in return. So how proud do you feel in sitting with people with different nationality and culture and educating them about your country and religion under Sheikh Mohammed bin Razid Center for Culture and Understanding? The Sheikh Mohammed Culture Center for Culture and Understanding is one of my favorite uh, things that I do almost I do every year. I volunteer and I've been doing that since 2007. It brings me joy and satisfaction and happiness because a lot of tourists that come to Dubai, they really do not understand the culture and the religion and our traditions. At the beginning, there were so many people that came with stereotypical ideas about how we lived. And when they came to the cultural center, which is in Al Fahidi, a a very old neighborhood built uh, with mud and wood and uh, classic old homes. So it's it's a full village. So as they went to the village, they've noticed uh, the difference between the super modern Dubai and then an area which is dedicated to preserve the past and seeing the surprise in their faces when telling them stories, especially when they come from different religions Educating them as in like telling them stories about uh, the religion and the, uh, the holy book made them surprised that there is a lot of similarities in all of these uh, religions. And they never knew that what we have in our books is also what they have in their books. And the same also goes with Judaism, which is we showed them that coexistence and peace and tolerance, what will help humanity flourish. So what are your future goals? My future goals, it's a little bit ambitious, which is I've been always opening companies. Like I open my own companies and I either gain or lose and then I close it and then I open another and another and another and then another. My dream, which is something that I'm working on, is creating a research and development facility. Unlike any other facility that is in the region, it's in the making and it's happening. So what has been your favorite selling experience in real estate? In terms of selling real estate, I've, I never sold properties. I, I was primarily focused on uh, shopping malls. So in shopping malls, we don't sell, we uh, lease. That's the natural practice uh, here in all of the mall developers in, uh, in the UAE and I think also the, the worldwide, which is you build a mall, you have relationships with uh, the brands and you lease spaces. What has been your biggest failure and what lesson did you learn from that particular failure? My biggest, 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 biggest failure in 2019, I would say at the end of 2018, I've uh, started my dream company, which uh, costed me a a substantial amount of uh, money. I trusted people that I've known for more than 10 years to work with me in this, but I was the sole investor and uh, sole owner. It started with extreme positivity and things were happening. And then complications happened, whereas I've discovered that the guy that I've uh, trusted is known to be a con artist. And I've, I've known him since such a long time. I've never worked with him like in business, but I've, he was a client, one of our projects in uh, Nakhil. So I, I became friends with him, but then uh, for a long period of time, but then it appeared to be that uh, he's uh, a con artist. Very smart, actually. He, he doesn't have uh, even uh, identification papers like uh, passport or whatnot. So he's an absconder and I got away with it. And I couldn't fix that failure because immediately after that, I was taken to the military service, it's mandatory. So it came during that period. And instead of being able to fix the problem, I was I was denied use of any modes of communication. You know, in an army, you cannot use a mobile phone or, and you stay in the base for up to a month 
with zero outside communication. And then you return back and you open your phone and so much compiled bad news. It got solved, but what I learned is business is personal. Like people say, look at business separately from your personal life. I think that business is personal because if you partner up with your friend is annoying at work, you can't just then meet him at night at a cafe and don't have like a grudge or anger towards him. So how was your experience in army? Extraordinary. I wasn't supposed to go because I had a different classification, which it's a level where I don't have to go to the base because the nature of my life and uh, work and all of that. But then they changed it suddenly. So I had no choice but to shave my head. They gave me a list of the basic stuff that you need and the limit, like three pairs of socks, brown, three pairs of t-shirt, white only, and so on. And one toothbrush, one toothpaste small shampoo uh, so I had to do it all in one day because apparently it became a legal issue I, I loved it but at the same time it has caused me financial damage because I couldn't tend to my investments however I loved it it, it changed me so who has been your mentor in your professional journey I didn't have a mentor for the past maybe uh, 10 years. So I, I relied mainly on on myself. Although I, I wish that I had the opportunity to work alongside a, a professional of the same level and caliber. So how would you define success and what is the role of hard work, smart work and luck in achieving success? It's one of my favorite words, success and uh, prosperity. And it's also one of the uh, the things that we hear almost every day during prayer, when they call for prayer. They say it twice, Hayya ala al-Falah, Hayya ala al-Falah, which is come to success, come to success. Success, in, in my point of view, is reaching a level where you are happy with what you've achieved in life and knowing deep in the heart that you've worked with complete honesty and vigorousness. Everyone defines it in a different way, but for me, it's very important to understand that success is a word that is very important and very serious because for some people, success is making more money. For me, success is maintaining a healthy life, maintaining a household, having a family, focusing on the family, continuously learning, never stop reading and and learning and whatever it takes to achieve something on a daily basis. So according to you, what does leadership mean to you and what are the qualities of a good leader? A leader, from my experience, is a person that is able to empower his people, his employees and motivate them in a positive way and influencing them to achieve their goals whilst being satisfied and happy. I've learned a a valuable lesson just so recent and I've adopted it and it made me understand the value of leadership, which is when giving someone a responsibility or a task, you give them the task and then you step completely away, giving them the chance to deal with it without the worry of doing anything wrong. And I've started doing it in fullest, for example, connecting a person to a person directly within the department to do us a certain work and removing myself, just keeping my role as a a motivator and encourager and empowering them to feel confident about uh, the decisions they make and make them aware that uh, they are more than capable of doing it in their own way. So what advice would you like to give to young professional in real estate sector? I advise them to read a lot. And the power of uh, reading and the power of word plays a major and uh, strong role in uh, the world that you see is defined, especially when reading. So what are do's and don'ts anybody should remember while starting his or her journey in real estate in UAE? I think it's a field that requires a certain level of personality and skills. And it, in the media, it's a field that is highly glorified that many people feel they're capable of being part of. However, it's a healthy challenge. You need, with the expanding real estate market in Dubai, you have to reinvent the way you work. You have to come up with your own style, method, even per character. 
like you'd see nowadays on on so many social media platforms tiktok or youtube a lot of people that uh, just uh, joined uh, i mean started their real estate journey and they're creating the most cringiest videos ever it really doesn't work it makes a person look silly but it requires a level of experience and adaptability and originality we've got so many so many properties so many projects uh, that are happening many people tend to just copy the styles and behaviors of the people that they see on media or the people that they look up up to so what advice would you like to give to young professionals who are just entering their professional world i advise them patience and perseverance and most importantly persistently being positive like even if the environment at work might be chaotic or the people surrounding you might be competing with each other on who suffers the most i feel that in that journey which is also called the hero's journey he has to decide whether to match the collective mood and energy or uh, find his way to avoid negativity and avoid any kind of creature that preaches sadness and <laughs> and failure so now we'll start a rapid round okay your favorite destination palo alto the united states uh, silicon valley it's heaven on earth your favorite adventure a safari a, they call it a game drive and it started at 5 a.m the weather was freezing cold we were driving for hours and looking at uh, animals that are not caged they're uh, they're in the wild that are not worried about our presence your favorite actor and actress kristen wick and the favorite uh, my favorite actor is one of two will ferrell or steve carell favorite color black second choice of career i really wanted to tour the space station is the mohammed bin rashid space agency success in one line persistence perseverance and the thirst for prosperity that never quenches so at last one line that defines you i'm a very spontaneous extraordinary random person i'm not a genius Uh, but uh, I'd like to be. I'm uh, Mr. Fantastic, oh, <laughs> ultra optimistic. <laughs> Thank you very much for your precious time and opening your Thank heart. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.